get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, RX Bar, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person VIP events and masterminds for top entrepreneurs. Nathan's been to one. We do them all over the country, including many events in the e-commerce industry. We hosted events this past year in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, where you're from, New York, Sonoma, Las Vegas, more. So if you see the value of immersing yourself with other top entrepreneurs to connect and collaborate, to get your business to the next level, it's all about relationships. Um, and that's what Sourceify does too, right? Then go to rise25.com and find out where our next event is going to be. So Nathan, thanks for joining me. I'm going to introduce you in a second, but um, you were at our last event. What'd you think? Yeah, oh, amazing. I mean, the amount of people that I connected with was incredible. Cool. I did not pay you to say that. So, yeah. um, <laughs> um, so today we have Nathan Resnick. He's Sourcing Pro, founder of Sourceify. He's built multiple e-commerce companies, seven-figure Kickstarter projects and speaks fluent Mandarin on top of it. Sourceify is the fastest growing sourcing platform backed by Y Combinator that helps hundreds of companies manufacture products around the world. He even managed to get a cease and desist from Conor McGregor, yes, the UFC competitor. So we will talk a little about that too. Nathan, thanks for joining me. Thanks so much for having me, I'm excited. Yeah. What's been a low moment and then you probably don't have any low moments in business, right? But um, and then what's gotta, been on the flip side been one of the proudest moments or milestones? So you know the low moment, it's crazy. I mean, this was just last year in June. I had my my co-founder at the time who was in Europe. You know, we were planning to uh, move into this office together and start you know working on Sourceify. And he was traveling Europe with his girlfriend and called me and said, you know, Nathan, like I've had a family emergency, something's gone wrong. I, he basically said, I'm not going to be able to start Sourceify with you. And I'm going to have wow. to drop out. And he was our, you know, lead developer was going to develop our wow. platform. And so literally this day that we had, uh, we were supposed to move in our office, my, you know, then lead developer called me and said, look, Nathan, I'm, I'm not going to be able to start Sourceify with you. And I was in shock. You know, this was at 6 a.m. And, you know, already had been uh, accepted in this, you know, co-working incubator office type of space and uh, was going to get ready to go. And then at 7 a.m., got a call from my dad. And my dad says, Nathan, your grandma has passed away. I'm like, you know, wow. That's Two, a bad day. Yeah, two incredibly important people passing or you know leaving me in one day is nuts. I mean, you know, my grandma uh, passed peacefully, and you know, sure she's in a better place now. But you know, I realized I, I was sitting there. You know, uh, I, I was crying to be honest. You know, I was, I was very just yeah, kind of hit, hit a wall, and I said to myself, "Look, number one, what do I think my grandma would want me to do? And number two, can I still go out and build this company? You know, do I need to have this co-founder? And I think a lot of times in the startup world, people think they need a co-founder, think they need someone to build a company with them. At the end of the day, you know, you need a great team and you need people to support you as you grow. But if you start yourself and start growing, there's no reason you need to give, you know, 30 or 50% of your company to anyone else. You know, you can do that yourself and grow a team around you as you grow or as you, you know, become profitable or as you raise money. You don't have to necessarily start with with other people. And so, you know, for me, uh, I said, look, you know what, uh, I'm going to go about this journey and, and see how far I can get it and make it happen. And so uh, ended up, you know, moving into our office space alone. It was just me. And uh, to see, you know, how far we've come in the past year has been incredible. Um, and, and, you know, it, I, I can't thank everyone that has supported us and, and you know, heard of Sourceify before and is, is getting interested in it because, you know, it's a roller coaster. It, you know, for us, 
too. It's like, look, we're starting a company here. We're trying to disrupt an industry. We're taking on some big fish. And, you know, the process that we're creating, you know, we, we love hearing customer feedback. We love helping people. But at the end of the day, you know, in, I think a lot of times in, in entrepreneurship, there's sometimes this mirage of success. It's like, look, you know, every company goes through that roller coaster. And even like, for example, uh, w- one of our investors, the founder of GoFundMe, GoFundMe is this incredible platform that people use around the world to raise money for uh, all sorts of charitable yeah, causes. It could be like a medical condition that they have or, you know. Exactly. And so GoFundMe is this incredible business where, you know, they started, I think, about 10 or 12 years ago, but the founders, you know, had an incredible success where they sold for hundreds of millions of dollars. But what a lot of people don't realize is that that didn't happen overnight. You know, it happened over the course of eight or nine years. Like same with Dropbox, you know, Dropbox started uh, 11 or 12 years ago and they just went public. And so, you know, seeing the journey and really having a team that's there for the long run is extremely important. And I think that's one of the most overlooked parts of starting a company. You know, if you are hiring someone new, ask them, you know, what's going to keep you here in five years? You know, what's going to keep you here in 10 years? Think longer term, because I think when you have that longer term vision and when you have that, you know, thought in your head of where you want to create a company that outlives you or like, you know, I listened to uh, uh, how I built this Michael Dell, you know, the founder of Dell computers, listening to him talk and understand how he went through the process. I mean, he was making over sixty million dollars when he was twenty-one. Incredible! And that company now is, you know, at that time it sounds like a lot, but now it's making you know, tens of billions of dollars. It's it's crazy, and you know, to see how he's put himself and put Dell in a position to outlive himself, I think is something that every entrepreneur should think about. Um, and you know, there's obviously certain you know startups that go for more of a you know quick growth and flip type of model, which you know you don't always understand and know the circumstances in the future but i think having it in your head in terms of how is this gonna you know turn out over the next 10 years because you know at the end of the day i don't think 10 years it's it's not that long of a time period i mean most people live to be around 80 or so nowadays i mean one eighth of your life i mean some people say maybe the younger ones are better than the older ones but uh we, we can talk again in 30 years and see how we <laughs> we'll do this in 10 years i'm gonna mark my yeah. calendar 10 years from now Um, no, and I I appreciate you sharing that because it's, it is oftentimes we just hear of a success and we think it's overnight. We don't see all of the, the work and the time and the trials and tribulations that went into it. So, I mean, you face some like day one, you know, uh, with a personal tragedy and then the business, uh, you know, the, you know, it'll be a blip when you look back on it, but at the time it seems like devastating. Um, on the flip side, what's been one of the proud moments, milestones? You know, I, I think for us, it's it's exciting every day because we get to create and bring so many different products to life. And we've worked with companies that are, you know, as big as $800 million to companies that are just starting. And it's amazing to see the amount of creativity in the world and what people are creating. I mean, that's really the beauty behind it. And I think for us, that's what keeps it, that's what keeps us going. That's what excites us. And it's an amazing feeling to bring a product to life. You know, I remember when I was in college, I invented the first leather watch strap without holes. I was in class, got a notification from DHL, your package arrived. This was my first sample of these watches. And, you know, I stood up, I'm going to the bathroom, you know, drove home as fast as I could and got to my house, opened the package, and I was blown away. You know, this idea that I had in my head yeah. was now pretty cool product on my wrist. And like, that moment, that feeling is something we get to create every day for companies and people through Sourceify. And so that's really the excitement. You know, there's going to be some highs like getting into Y Combinator or, uh, you know, raising money. But at the end of the day, you know, those, those, you know, points in a company's life are really just a means to a start or a means to grow. Totally. You know, a lot of people think startups go raise a bunch of money, they're successful. Raising money is a means to a start. It's, it's you know, not a means to an end by any means. I mean, maybe it enables you to pay yourself some money or yeah. grow your team faster, more effectively. But, you know, r- raising money means you've got a lot of, a lot of responsibility and you've yeah. got to make a return on that money for your investors. Totally. I'm sure anyone invests in you or will record that bit to them. It's a, yeah. <laughs> um, but 
I have one last question, Nathan, and I just want to tell people, um, check out trysourcefy.com. Trysourcefy.com. They have, a, they have some great information on there. Check out their platform. You know, if you have an idea or if you're a company that wants to actually expand their product line, it's it shortcuts your time. You know, time is valuable. And if you want to shortcut the time that you're spending, it could be a full time job trying to communicate and figure this stuff out. So that's what they do. So check out trysourcefy.com. Um, cease and desist from Conor McGregor. Yeah. <laughs> So that was that's uh, one person I would not want to upset. <laughs> I'll put it that way. That was, uh, I mean, that was probably the most fun we had last year. Where, for people that aren't listening in, there was you know this amazing Conor McGregor suit that he wore to the Floyd Mayweather press conference when him and Floyd Mayweather were fighting, and it had pinstripes going down the suit that said you know F U F U F U, um, and we saw that that same night that everyone else saw it, and the world was going crazy about it. You know, it was all over. Uh, every media outlet and we said let's manufacture those and I said you know should we and we're like yeah why not so we literally manufactured got samples in a week um, did a little photo shoot and I, I the suit fit me so I was the model um, <laughs> from the back I could see you kind of could look like Conor McGregor from the back I don't know yeah, maybe that. I gotta hit the gym a little more but <laughs> but you know he, the suit went viral. We launched uh, fuckyousuits.com and we were all over, you know, Hypebeast, Pro Bible, The Slate. And in the first week, we did $23,000 organically in sales. I wow. mean, these products were priced anywhere from, I think, of the wallets for like 40 bucks to the suits being like two or $300. Um, and the margins on them were great. I mean, I'll, I'll send you the article. Like, we're I read the article. It's amazing. Article. Yeah. Yeah. Very transparent about the unit economics behind it. And you know, it was just kind of this dynamic of creating a buzz and following a trend. You know, I think there's always opportunities to create products that follow a trend. And that's really a moment where we hit the nail on the head in terms of building on that momentum. Um, you know, the story doesn't end with us making a boatload of money. It ends with us getting a cease and desist. You're pinned oh. down and punched in the face. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Partially because, uh, you know, we were using Conor McGregor's uh, IP and images in the marketing that we were doing and weren't really, you know, thinking ahead on, in, in that sense. But um, it was a matter about the experience and, like, just being able to showcase what we can do at Sourceify and also really just being an example for every e-commerce yeah. entrepreneur. Like, I think a lot yeah. of times people think it takes, you know, a month or months to actually create a e-commerce company or store. We did it in a few days, you know, and, and then did a good amount of sales in, yeah. in, a, in a week. So you got a cease and desist, but you got something good out of the deal. Yeah, so they gave uh, you know two tickets. I, the marketing guys got to go. I was like, you know, oh, you, you guys, didn't go. So you went. To, so they went to the the Mayweather McGregor fight. Yeah, yeah. I, I ended up going to an Irish bar wearing the suit, though. I mean, everyone was taking photos of me there. That was pretty cool. <laughs> well, Nathan, first one. I want to be the first one. Thank you so much, everyone. Check out trysourcefy.com. This has been a blast. Jeremy, thank you. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand